We'll start with the call to worship. Listen, God is calling. Listen, listen, God, God is calling, calling to the wood and Listen, listen, God is calling to the wood and vine, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news, that he came to save us. And set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling to the wood and mighty, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling to the wood and mighty, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let them be forgotten throughout the world. In the triune name of God, go and baptize. Listen, listen, God is calling to the wood in valley, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the wood in valley. Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling to the wood and valley. Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling to the wood and valley. Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oops. Are we on now? I can hear myself, but I don't think I'm on over the air. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Thank you. Welcome to First Lutheran here in Marshall, Minnesota. My name is Scott Fuller. I'm one of the pastors here. I hope and pray that we all feel blessed by our time of ministry and worship together. Uh, you know the drills already. Um, it's the, we, everybody has masks on in that same vein. We are asking people to not um, speak the prayers or sing the songs. Uh, we'll ask the, uh, the choir, the uh, uh, Today I'm team, to uh, do the congregational responses. Um, you all know the traffic rules already, only two weeks into it. Uh, and ushering, uh, people will leave the sanctuary from back working to front. We offer a number of prayers of continued help and healing for some folks. Uh, today we especially think of Ramona um, McCorkendale, her family. Her funeral will be here later this afternoon. We offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving for a number of things and people. We want to say thank you to Bill and Kathy Engler who are sponsoring this weekend's radio broadcast in honor of their granddaughter Sydney's seventh birthday. We offer prayers of blessings for two children who will be baptized at the next service today, Berkeley Ann McCoy and Lincoln James Moravitz. So God's blessings to those two families. Also want to say thank you to all of our musicians and technicians who are blessing our worship this weekend. Uh, today I'm is here this morning and the guys and uh, people in the back in the control booth, so thank you to all of them. We also offer a pair of prayer of blessing for Laura Mittling and Derek Anderson who were united in marriage yesterday afternoon. 
And to top it all off, we're going to take today to say a huge thank you to our friend Tanya Tomasic. She has faithfully, lovingly, and brilliantly served this congregation for the last 30 plus years. So today we're going to celebrate that very amazing fact and her wonderful ministry here among us. I also offer a prayer of blessing for all of you who are able to continually continue to financially support the uh, congregation's ministry, so thank you for all of that. Today's preaching passage comes from the book of Exodus, and it tells us the story of the Israelites who rebel against Moses. They're camped out at the foot of Mount Sinai, and while their leader goes up to have a talk with God, the people get anxious. They get so worried, in fact, that they force Moses' brother Aaron to build for them an idol. Well, Aaron does just that. He takes the gold from builds a calf as an idol of God. But the Lord is not happy about that. And he, and he and Moses have a bit of an argument about who's responsible for these crazy people. And God says, you brought them out of Egypt. And, he, and Moses says, no, you brought them out of Egypt. It's a pretty amazing passage, this intimate com- conversation between Moses and God almost as equals. So it would be a lot, more fun, a, lot, a lot of fun as we uh, take a closer look at that during the sermon. We are glad you're here that you have joined us for worship. It's our prayer that God will bless you and keep you secure in the grasp of heaven's gift of grace. I invite Paul Freeberg and Tanya Tomasic to come forward at this time. As they're coming forward, I want to uh, do a little Tanya trivia. So how many states do you think Tanya has taken groups to over the last 30 years? How many different states? Not passed through, but just taken them to? Twelve. Higher. Twenty. A little bit lower. Eighteen. Eighteen different states. Did you ever count out how many states you went through to get to those states? (laughs) You got a map. Okay, very good. And how many Lenten suppers has Tanya served? It's well over 100, but under 200. 175. 165. Very good. Okay, Paul. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the executive committee, the folk council, and all the family here at First Lutheran Church, uh, with great appreciation, I want to present this gift to Tanya for all her years of dedicated service to the kids, the youth, and the church as a whole. Thank you very much. Scott says that I have to say something. So um, I just want to thank the congregation. Um, It's an honor and a blessing to be able to work in this church. Um, Not many churches truly understand what youth and family ministry is. And I believe that anybody could do a good job in youth ministry in, in this particular congregation because you guys get it. You guys know what it means to love the kids. Um, to pray for the kids, to support the kids, and um, for that, I am so appreciative. A lot of memories. Um, Corliss, thank you for driving me in the pickup when we went to have lunch. That's when I knew that I was going to feel comfortable in this church, so I've been working with great people. Um, We've got an awesome staff. We just have so much fun working together. It is a true blessing to walk with kids and families on their faith journey. Uh, I can't even really put it into words. But just know that um, I love the kids like I love my own kids, and um, I'm always there for them. So, but I do want to say that actually today is Pastor Appreciation Day. So I want to say thank you to Scott because he is the best of the best. Um, and it's just, it's a blessing to work with you. And you're a pretty good friend, too. We're going to have a couple of other uh, special presentations to, uh, to say thank you to Tanya. Our song.
Now a video from our Bishop John Anderson here in southwestern Minnesota. Hi there, I'm Bishop John Anderson. I'm really pleased to be able to join you for a few moments at First Lutheran today. Hey, I hear it's a special day in the life of your congregation as you celebrate the ministry of your youth and family minister, Tanya Tomasik. Tanya, I'm so grateful that through the years you have been able to touch so many people's lives. I mean, I think about all the young people that you've had a chance to walk with and care for. I remember back when I was a younger pastor and we'd be at youth gatherings and national youth gatherings and uh, you always had a, a great bunch of young people with uh, you and I respected and appreciated how you related to them. So. I, I hear rumors it's been 31 years. That's amazing. And uh, I know that uh, just like I enjoyed growing garden, uh, gr growing plants, excuse me, uh, they're over here on my side, that you love growing people. And I'm so thankful for all of the young people you've grown and all of the people you've helped grow deeper and wider in their understanding of what it means to follow Jesus. And I'm really glad that First Lutheran is celebrating your ministry as a part of their great commitment to youth and family and faith formation and all of the ways that congregations support the lives of Christians. So you all have a great day. But Tanya, congratulations on, hit, on this milestone. May God continue to bless your ministry and the ministry of First Lutheran. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Faithful God, Israel doubted your promise 
and turn to an idol for comfort. Show us how to trust only in you and to walk in the ways of your word. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As Eric Luther comes forward to uh, bring a greeting to Tanya, I'm going to have a couple more questions for you. Um, how many years of fundraising activities? Come on up, Eric. How many years of fundraising activities has Tanya been here? Remember, she's been here 30 years. Hint, hint. <laughs> 30 years. Yeah, right. Exactly. How many trips to Klein Ranch? 20. 28. Yeah. How many times on a horse at Klein Ranch? 25. Oh, <laughs> Eric. Good morning. My name is Eric Luther. Hmm, how did that picture get up there? In case you missed this picture earlier, I wanted to show it one more time. Kind of fun, huh? They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Members of the congregation, what do you see? Trust. Bold. <laughs> exactly right. Enthusiasm, fun, excitement for the youth, no boundaries, positive vibes. I've worked with Tanya for many of the 30 years she has been the youth director of youth and family ministry here at First Lutheran. From Linton suppers, senior breakfasts, Whopper feeds, fix and freeze fundraisers, rake and roll, summer youth trips, Klein Ranch, and then again the youth committee. We have done it all. It has been a privilege and pleasure to tag along with her on all the activities that she has organized. Tanya always has a plan. Even the past six months with COVID, she has adapted and has changed the ways she meets the needs of the youth and the congregation. She does a great job and we're blessed to have her. Tanya, the First Lutheran family appreciates that all you do. We can't wait to see what you have planned for the next 30 years. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. So we'll invite um, three-year-olds and their parents to stand up at this time. So God loves you very much. Keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> God loves you very much. And your family has been sharing that love with you since you were born. As a sign of that love, you, at, you were baptized at a baptismal font like this, maybe this very one. Today we celebrate another milestone. And... Mason, just as you trust that your parents love you, you're also asked to trust that God loves you. The best way for us to remember that is that of the cross. Jesus' love is so great that he was willing to die on the cross so that we could know that God loves each one of us. And this cross has a special power Throughout the day, it will absorb light that comes from both light bulbs and outside. And, that, and then at night, it will give off a soft glow so that you'll always be able to see it. Its light will remind you that Jesus' love is with you and always with you. So as a sign of God's love, we invite you now to make a sign of the cross on Mason's forehead and hand him the cross. And then you can lay your hands on him in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, bless these children, fill them with faith, and use this special cross to remind them that you will always be with them 
and will always love them both now and forever. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give them a big round of applause. Today's first reading comes from Exodus 32, verses 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said, Come make gods for us who shall go before us. As for Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it into a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to drink and eat and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They then quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them, and they have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, for that, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I'll make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord as God, his God, and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that they brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, Change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Psalm 63. O God, you are my God. I I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I I think about you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadows of your wings, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. My right hand upholds you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This is now a, a, a video from uh, Bishop Eaton of the whole ELCA. Hello, Tanya. Let me add my congratulations and well wishes to so many of your friends, family, and fellow parishioners on your 31st year, which you're starting in your position in First Lutheran in Marshall. I understand that when you first started, that there was no guarantee that the funding or the program would even last a year. And now 31 years later, you're still serving and forming and ministering to the youth and families, not only of First Lutheran, but of all of those in the community. I probably can imagine that at least some of the children with whom you are working now are children of the children you first served when you came. May God continue to bless your ministry. May God continue to give you the, the stamina that you need to work with youth and families, the humor, um, and also the assurance that you are doing a holy and honorable work. Thanks a lot. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O Lord, to receive your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that in hearing we may believe, and in believing we may obey your will, revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. So as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the story of the Israelites here takes up after they have been in Egypt 
they were there for uh, um, the last week's text we had was the the tenth plague um, and now they have been led out to the uh, the Red Sea Moses uh, parts the water they pass through the waters come back over Pharaoh's army and they are safe right they are across the, the the water there's no way that Pharaoh can get to them and are they relieved well yes they're relieved because Pharaoh was no longer a threat but they're out in the desert right and they have never provided for themselves they've never had to they were slaves so now this intense time of trusting God learning to trust God takes over um, God provides manna and quail for them to eat and water to drink uh, so many times God reminds them of God's loving presence and yet they have so little capacity to deal with setbacks and challenges disappointments and delays they have a slave mentality there is no well of strength there is no reserve of will there is no stockpile of spirit after they come to Mount Sinai they finally make their way there Moses tells the tribe that he's going to go have a conversation with God and it's going to take him up on the mountain and he's going to be gone for a while well, he appoints his brother Aaron, the chief priest, as the chief babysitter. Then he tells the people to be good, basically, and he disappears. Well, as every parent or grandparent or child care provider knows, leaving the kids alone is not going to end well, right? As the old saying goes, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Told this story at uh, confirmation on Wednesday night. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, we had one of the biggest classes to go through the town of Shelby, Montana. Uh, there are 30 kids in our class, and our teacher was Mrs. Holstein, and she was built like a Holstein. I mean, she was solid. Uh, she was a great teacher. She was uh, stern but fair, uh, and we just were very felt very fortunate to be in her class. Um, she also had a big paddle hanging up to the side of the chalkboard um, on a leather strap and it had holes drilled in it so that when you used it the uh, the holes uh, allowed the air to pass through and you got a stronger swat well do you think she'd ever need it nah not with us right um, she gets called down to the office and uh, in those 30 kids, there was probably 10 who were really, really good and 10 who were kind of like me, between good and bad, and then 10 who were probably pretty naughty. So uh, about two, three minutes pass, and we don't hear back from her, and the naughty kids start throwing stuff, right? And two or three, four minutes later, um, the rest of us in the middle start throwing stuff. And then even the, by the last three or four minutes that she's gone, even everybody in the room is up throwing stuff, yelling, doing everything. She walks in, opens the door, and the pandemonium just halts, right, instantly. She just glares at us and shuts the door. Well, we all know that trouble's coming, so we get to our seats. She goes down and gets the pr principal, comes in and uh, announces that every one of us needs to go out into the hallway and line up with our nose to the wall, 15 on each side, and she grabs the paddle. And then she walked out, and as the principal nodded, she walked down and swatted each one of us once. This is a little bit like what happened to the Israelites, except on steroids. Uh, shortly after Moses leaves, the people start getting nervous. They can't help it. They can't help it. When we have little capacity to deal with change, our anxiety kicks in. That's what humans do. And former slaves of any kind have been the denied the ability to develop that emotional physical or spiritual reserve well more time passes Moses delays and these people start getting even more agitated they need someone to lead them they need someone to give them direction they need to see that someone with their eyes they need that someone to give them hope and right now a God who insists on being detached and invisible is much less than what they want and infinitely less than what they think and are convinced that they need so the people go to Aaron and they convince him to take the gold they got from the Egyptians melt it down and make them a God that they can see and touch a God with skin on as it were I love that little story about the the girl who's being tucked into bed she tears up and her parents, so when they start to leave the room, they say, don't be scared, honey, Jesus is with you. And, G and she says, I know, but I want someone here with skin on. 
Right? The, the Israelites wanted a God with skin on. A God whose visual presence they believe will give them security and hope, even if it is just a block of wood covered in gold. Well, you know the story. Aaron gives up and gives in and then gives them what they want, a statue of a golden calf to represent their one true God. Now, to his credit, Aaron does his best to make sure that the people are worshiping the only God in their hearts, even if they are bowing down before an idol. So he places an altar in front of the calf and then shouts, tomorrow we will have a festival of worship to the Lord. But regardless of what Moses intention, or Aaron's intentions were, the statue does not sit well with God, as it always happens. The Lord wants no image, no image to represent his holiness. And why do you suppose that is? I'm thinking that any image of God will soon become what the people worship instead of God, right? Right? Any image of God has the potential to remove worship of God. Think of the churches back in the, the days of the Re before the Reformation. They, they would spend money hand over fist trying to find a relic that was supposedly really from one of the saints or Jesus himself. A finger bone or a tooth or um, a piece of wood that's supposed to be a sliver of the cross. Even back then, though, people knew that that was a, a, a racket. Martin Luther's co-founder, uh, reformer John Calvin wrote, if all the pieces of the cross that could be found were collected together, <laughs> there would be a whole ship full of them. Thanks be to God that you and I don't have that kind of pressure. Thanks be to God that we have nothing to offer to the world but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Just like Paul says in 1 first, in first Corinthians 2, 2, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. For the same is true for us as it was for the ancient Israelites. Human beings will always, always, always choose an image over an unknowable, unseeable, untouchable God. We all want a God with skin on. That's what the Israelites wanted. That's what Aaron gave them, and that made God very angry. As you heard Corliss read, God and Moses have a little heated argument about which one of them is responsible for raising up such a bunch of troublemakers. Picture a mom and dad blaming whose fault it is that the kids turned out the way they did, right? But we get it about the Israelites wandering in the wilderness because we do our own share of spiritual wandering and wondering and wishing after other gods. Most of the time we're earnest in our desire to love and serve and trust God, but we're also weak in our ability or our interest to live by faith alone. We want to be good servants of our neighbors, but we don't want our acts of service to be too demanding. We like to think that we're striving to do God's will in our lives. But if you're like me, we rarely give God the time to be able to fill us with the Spirit's gift to love our enemies, to forgive those who hurt us, and to go the extra mile. Though the bad news is that we are not and never will be perfect. But the good news is that that's okay. We don't have to be perfect. Because by his amazing gift of grace, Jesus makes us perfect before God. We'll never be perfect in our thoughts, words, or deeds, but we are made perfect in our relationship with God by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And his gift of love and forgiveness for each one of us for the entire world, right? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
fullness of redemption through labor pains of love. And so we await patience and hope. Be the death for life, for angels, for rulers, no trials in the present, no angels to come, neither height nor death, no love of creation can ever separate us from the love of God. How many people were in the largest group that Tanya has taken on a trip somewhere in the country? 75. 75 higher. Actually, 85. And now you went to Alaska, right, Eric? Yep. 85 people, adults and kids, to, uh, to Alaska. How many adult chaperones has Tanya have managed to convince to go on these trips? Uh, what's that? Oh. <laughs> no, you don't have ever have to beg. 162. And then uh, how many yards did you break? I think we did that 85. Um, I think that's, oh, how many church overnighters? That church synod youth gatherings, all that stuff? 162. Makes you old just thinking about it, doesn't it? <laughs> My goodness. Let's, uh, let's join together in the, uh, I'll ask today to join me in the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. God of grace, we thank you for the way your spirit fills our hearts with your wonderful gift of grace that comes to the entire world through our Lord Jesus Christ. Help our ears hear your call, help our hearts trust your word, and help, help our spirits delight in your grace. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, God of hope, we trust that you are tending to all people who are hurting or in pain. For those who are threatened by death, breathe on them your breath of life. For those who are sick in body, spirit, or mind, bless them with your healing presence. For those who feel weak, strengthen them with your strong right hand. For those who feel like they're at the end of their rope, 
Bless them with your gift of hope. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, remember me. of love as these days are marked with changes and challenges tensions and testings fears and frustrations teach us daily that you hold our hearts you hold our lives you hold our future in your hands give us your peace that passes all understanding we pray to the Lord Jesus of life we celebrate how you are the author of love of hope of all that is good we pray that you bless and protect this congregation and that you give us strength to face the days ahead and that you fill our hearts with the spirit of your abundance we pray to the Lord God, we pray that you would bless our friend Tanya. We praise you for her last 30 years of faithful service to the gospel here at First Lutheran, and we pray that you would continue to bless her in her ministry here, and us all. We pray to the Lord. ask the the team to join me in our Lord's Prayer. Together we pray. Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your will will be done, done, on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today today our daily bread, bread, and and forgive us our our sins, sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, Tanya, you've been a great sport. I thank you for giving us this opportunity to celebrate not only your ministry here, but this congregation's ministry with uh, youth and family and all of us. Um, We've had fun pointing out some of the fun facts about Tanya, but the the numbers that really count have never been totaled. And out of the number of people that, uh, that she has held while tears went down their eyes, the number of hearts that she has touched, the number of spirits that she has elevated when they were feeling low, and the number of people that she has communicated God's gift of grace to. For for all that, we say thank you, Tanya, for an incredible ministry here. We love having you here and can't wait to see the next 30 years, as Eric said. God's (laughs) blessings to you, my friend. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Yeah.
friendship better known alive among us here alive among us here together met together by all that God has done we'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one the love that makes us one Thanks be to God.